Now turn to them and ask them what they got you. No. What they got for you. <laughs> All right. You know, early in my faith journey, one of the things that I wasn't afraid of uh, denomination or I didn't really care about denomination. One of the things early in my faith journey is that I just wanted to experience God. And, and I didn't care what it had over the door. If I heard there was a move of God somewhere, I was living in Texas at that time. If I, if I heard there was a move of God, I, I would go because I wanted to see a move of God. And more importantly, I didn't want to just see a move of God, you know, outside, you know, uh, in, in other people. I wanted and needed a move of God inside my life. Because during that particular time in my life, I had been chasing all kinds of things and, and thinking that I was looking for, for solutions for my life. And I want to tell you, it got me to a place that I was really so, what, what I call soul sick. I, I was really chasing and looking after things that wasn't from God, thinking that I was going to find some kind of inner peace, some kind of, some kind of place in my heart and my life to where I would, you know, have serenity. Uh, but that left me in really a state of emptiness, a state of being. But I have good news because the Word says if you look and you seek, you will find. Amen? Amen. And as we look and we seek, sometimes we, we may be looking for something different and we find something different than even the thing we were looking for. And what I'm here to tell you is, and really proclaim to you is that on this journey, God is at work on this journey and He is not lost. <laughs> he is not the one that's lost. Some people say they found Jesus. Let me tell you, Jesus was never lost. Amen? We are the ones that are lost. We are the ones that have to be found. And let me give you the good news today is that Jesus is always looking for a deeper relationship and a committed relationship if we would just understand that He is already looking for us. And when we come to that understanding that He is already looking, then what we'll realize is that He is already here. And He's been with us the whole time. And that when he gifted us life, he didn't gift us life to do nothing. He gifted us life not to just sit here and do nothing. He gives us life because he knows that we need a peace that goes beyond anything that this world is offering us. And so when he gives us that inner peace, that serenity that I was looking for, things will start to change, I really believe, in a dramatic and an impactful way, not just for your own state of being but for the world's state of being. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, I want to I share with you, I, uh, the message today is talking about the, the, the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> and, and we all have kind of a ghost of Christmas past, and, 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 you know, there's things that we've all done that we don't really want to talk about, the things that we've all done that we've shut in the closet. There's things that we want to keep hidden that we thought if someone knew, then maybe they wouldn't be our friend anymore. They wouldn't like us anymore. And so let me tell you, God already knows and he loves you. Not only does he like you, he loves you. And, he, and it isn't one of these things, one of these kind of relationships to where he finds out we've done something and then, or someone finds out we've done something, they say, I don't want to be a part of your life no more. It's like he's saying, I know exactly what you've done. I know what you're going to do. And I still intimately want to spend the rest of my life with you. And, and the rest of our life with God is not just a one-time event. It's just not a period of time, like a set time right here. Like, you know, we live 40, 80, 100 years. It's like eternity. God wants to spend eternity with you. He created you to spend eternity with Him. I mean, brothers and sisters, that's a long time. God loves you that much. He wants to spend eternity with you. That's good news. Amen? And so there's some words that I want to share with you today, and, and, and it may start off and be a little bit challenging, but in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, the tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. And so a lot of times we've said things or, or we've heard things, and they've either brought life into us or they brought death into a situation. Maybe we, you know, we were offended by someone, someone hurt us, and we said something to hurt someone. It may have happened even at Christmas. It may have happened in the holidays. It, it could have happened this morning or this week. Or maybe, I really think sometimes the most challenging things that we're saying are to ourselves when no one else is around. And maybe it didn't come out in a verbal form, but it was just a, 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 a conscious thought 
that we said to ourselves. Maybe something that we don't like about ourselves, something that we keep doing and we're like, we're beating ourselves up. We don't understand why this same thing keeps happening. I want to tell you there is, a, there is power that will give us life and death and it, it is spoken from the tongue. But what we have to understand and what we need to grasp today is the spoken word that God has given us first. Amen? And if we just base our lives on the spoken word that we have said or that someone else has said, we're going to live this life and we're not going to have lived a real life, a fulfilling life. And so kind of this goes to Christmas past. I want to talk about, you know, this, this kind of the idea of, of, of names real quick and, and some of the things that can happen through the given name. And so we see in this scripture in Genesis 35, 16 and 18, it says Rachel be, began to give birth and had great difficulty and as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, Don't despair, for you have another son. She's just given birth to another son. And, and so you would think that she'd be excited, right? But she's ill and she's sick. And, and as it says, As she breathed her last breath for, for she was dying, she said her son's name. Ben Oni. Ben Oni. But his, but his father named him Benjamin. Now, it's it. this story is a, is, is a great story, and it's kind of, I mean, we're going to have to dig just a little bit deeper to understand, you know, some truth in this story. But what has happened is the, the mom has just given birth to a son. She named him, and what's the dad do? He changes the name. <laughs> All right, he's in trouble. All right. <laughs> it's a good thing. This is going to sound strange, but it's a good thing that she died. Now, that sounds strange, right? Because she would have killed him, right? For changing his name. <laughs> now, bear with me real quick. I want you to think about, here is a story. Here's a story from the Word of God. This is a story that was written, and, and I believe in this story there, there's a text. There's something that we can gain even though this happened in the past, there's something that can be gained in the future. Okay? There's something that could be had now. I'm not talking about Je the Jesus story, the 2,000 years. This is even happening thousands of years before the Jesus story. The past. Everybody say the past. Yeah. Let me tell you, we all have a past. We have all done things that we're not proud of. We've all had things happen to us that have hurt us. There are things that have taken place in our lives that have carried us to a place emotionally that got the best of us that we may even wanted to hurt someone else. As we see this story unfold, we see that this lady, she's gone through great, great difficulty, this woman. Rachel, she's gone through this great difficulty. She has a son. She's longing to have her son. But yet, as she has her son, she dies. She goes off into eternity. So her life has ended, but actually, has it not just really begun? Now, this, the, the name Ben actually really means, if you go back and study the Hebrew, the name Ben actually means to build. Everybody say to build. To build. To build. Now, the word Ben, if it really means to build, and the... Oni, which is the last part of it that she was naming him, actually means vigor or sorrow. Everybody say sorrow. So build sorrow was what she was trying to name her son. That's not a very good name, is it? And I'm going to tell you, if we're not careful, what happens is we'll go through life and we will build sorrow in and through our lives and all around us. And what happens is the spoken word, this name was a spoken word, she named him this, but the father recognized something and he did something about it. And he named his son Benjamin. Quickly. Now, the reason why this story is so important, because we are so short-sighted in our feelings and emotions, what happens to us right now, what we're feeling right now, we will base all kinds of decisions on, and I believe that we'll miss out on the spiritual building up that God is trying to do in our hearts and in our lives today. Amen? I mean, y'all woke up and came to church this morning on Sunday for a reason, did you not? 
I mean, I, I pray that we're building up, not sorrow, but we're building up something different than sorrow today. It's so interesting, too, because the first king of Israel came out of the lineage of Benjamin. Okay? And so that was a tangible, that was a, not a spiritual king, that was a tangible, that was a physical king. And God gave the people what they wanted, and God will give you what you want, too. It says he gives you the desires of your heart. Let me ask you, what is your heart desire today? A better job? More money? A retirement? A new car? A bigger house? Huh? Don't get carried away. I mean, <laughs> we're not asking for much, Lord, right? <laughs> what, what, is God, what, what is it that you want today? What is it that you want? Peace, love, happiness. grace, happiness, self-control, hope. And so God is giving us a spiritual decision even in the tangible things of life. God is telling us that even though there are all these things that can be had, we need to be careful and make sure that none of those things necessarily have us. And I tell people, get everything you want out of life. Have, have a lot of stuff. Just make sure your stuff doesn't have you. Amen? And so think about this, as we're reading the scripture, this building up, the, the, the first son was actually Joseph, her first son was Joseph, but there was actually Joseph and then Benjamin, and this is Rachel, and there's actually some other kids that Joseph had by a previous wife, okay? And so all of these things are happening, and there's some key points. There's a scripture I want to read. It comes from Matthew 3, 9. It's not going to be on the screen, but I want to read this to you. Matthew 3, chapter 9, or chapter 3, verse 9, it says this. And do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as a father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. And, and so this is, this is what... The word, that this is what Matthew's trying to teach us, is that, is that in the scriptures that even the stones, I tell you that out of the stones, God can raise up children for Abraham, or in Abraham. Now that sounds, what does that have to do with, with Christmas? <laughs> what does that have to do with Christmas? God is big enough to deal with us wherever we're at. To me, that's a great Christmas story. Because at the end of the day, I need Jesus. Amen? I need Jesus. And so there's a, there's a few key points, and there's going to be some questions that come uh, from these points that I'm going to ask you. What's true about you now doesn't have to be true about you later. What's true about you now doesn't have to be true about you later. So, ask yourself, what am I doing in the world today for Jesus? Telling people? Anybody else? Praying with people? Anybody else? Helping people? Love, offering people love, reading the Word. And so what's true about me today doesn't have to be true about me later. So God is in the work of just because we all have a past, that doesn't mean that we all have to live and dwell in the past, that God is wanting to do something new in us. The Christmas story is a new birth. It's, it's Jesus coming into this world, not just so that he can be born and live for 33 years on this planet. It's that God is bringing a new hope. Amen? Everybody say a new hope. I need some. I'm not sure y'all are convinced you need some new hope. I don't care how much, you hope, how much hope you have now today, God can give you some new hope that goes beyond where you're at today. Amen? Amen. And so, so what's true about you now doesn't have to be true about you later. But the, also this, God's power is bigger than your past. Amen? God's power is bigger than your past. And so God is at work in this story, and he's at work in your story. And so even, even when we read in the scriptures, like in Matthew chapter 2, it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the uh, Magi from the east came to Jesus and asked, Where is the one who has been born the king of Jews? And we saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. They had come to worship Jesus. Why did they come to worship Jesus? Tell me. He was the Messiah. But why did these men, why did they come? Why did they leave their, their home, their comfort, to go worship this child, this infant? 
But they had to have known something. They were what? They were called. By who? By God. By God, by His power. And God is calling us. He's, under, he's wanting us to see that His power is bigger than our own. and he's, It's bigger than our past. And so we need to understand that in this Christmas story, Jesus is trying to reveal Himself in a new way. Also this, you don't get to choose what comes into your life, but you do get to choose what you call it. Okay? You didn't get to pick your mom and dad, did you? You didn't get to pick your, if you have brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. You didn't get to pick all of these things, but you get to choose how you deal in and through it. What you call it. And so God is calling us to understand that even though Benjamin had, had a different name, the, the father gives him Benjamin, and therefore, what happens? His name changed. What would you change your name to? <laughs> Have you thought about changing your name lately? <laughs> Anybody? Why, why, why not? Some of you are happy with your name, but I guarantee you there's someone here sitting here that has thought about changing their name. And the reason you thought about it is because something that was attached to it or something that had been done. I have a, a daughter that I adopted when she was 19, and she wanted to, she, she, her name was Danielle, and she wanted to change her first name to Brooklyn. And so when we adopted her at 19, she changed her name to Brooklyn Danielle Williams. Because she had had a past. Let me tell you, God still will use your past. And it will ultimately change your future. But here is the good news is not only does it change your future, it changes the future of someone else's life. God is in the business of changing lives. And so you get to choose today what you will call it. You get to choose today when you look in the mirror what you will call yourself. You get to choose today how you approach people and the things you say. You get to choose today because of God's free will. It's called grace. His grace is abundant. And His love is at work in your life. If you don't like what you've been called, name it something different. Has anybody ever been called a bad name in here before? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, can you imagine Jesus is born and He's got, he's got two half-brothers? Can you imagine the things they thought about their brother Jesus? Can you imagine the things that, he had, that they had said? Because we know the story. We know the story leading up to the birth of Jesus. 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 Is Joseph really his dad? Because didn't Mary get pregnant before she was even married? I mean, in our culture today, what happens is if someone gets pregnant before they're married, we say all kinds of things, or we, or we think all th kinds of things. And, and let me tell you, your saying and your thinking doesn't define anything. God is still at work in people's lives. And He's still at work in even your life, even when we don't acknowledge that God is the Almighty. Amen? And so, so the story, you know, if you, even if you don't like what you've been called, name it something different. It really has more to say about not, if someone's calling you name, it has more to say about them than it says about you. But yet you have taken certain things to heart. I know that someone probably showed up this morning because you feel like you have to show up because you're living through the week and you're not doing the things that you feel God needs you to do through the week. And maybe you feel a little bit beaten up and you're just like, man, I need to go be redeemed this morning. So I'm going to show up and, and just pray that God forgives me. I mean, that's why I showed up to church a lot of times. <laughs> when, when, I, when I was far from God, I showed up because I was like, I need some redemption. You know, I'd live pretty reckless. 
God isn't worried about your past. He's not concerned by your past. Your past is the past. God wants to use you today. Amen? God wants to give you a hope. It says in His Word, He wants to give you hope. He wants to give you a future. He wants you to see that He is the light. He is the light of the world. And He is creating something in your hearts today that where you can be the light to those that are hurting, those that are lost. And there is power to give through the spoken word, through the things you say. So really, this is what I want to get to, the main point. <laughs> that was dealing with you, but we see in Luke 1, 32, it says, He will be great, He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give Him the throne of His father David. And then in Philippians 2, 9 and 11, it says, Therefore God also has highly exalted Him and given Him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those in heaven and all of those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord, the glory of God forever. Everybody say the name Jesus. Jesus. There is power in the name. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how negative you feel. I don't care what someone said. If you will proclaim the name Jesus, everything's about to change. I don't care if you feel all alone. I don't care if you've shut everybody out. I don't care if you just shot dope. I don't care if you just drank as, uh, uh, yourself unconscious. If you would just say the name Jesus, things are about to change. There is something to saying the name Jesus. There is something that is collectively together in those syllables, Jesus. If I wanted to get Pentecostal, I could stretch it out real long too. One, one, of, one of the early experiences in my, in my maturing, in my faith journey, is there was this church, and, the, and they were having revival, like several weeks into a revival, and I remember thinking, man, I want to go check that out. And I thought, I'm going to go. And this particular night, this young man was up there, and it was the first time he had preached, and, and he was so excited, and he, and he preached for, I thought, maybe it was three and a half hours. It was probably 30 minutes, but it seemed like a long time. Uh, and it could have been that long. It was Pentecostal. Uh, but but he, he ran from one side to the other. And you know what his whole sermon was? Jesus. And I'm not kidding. And I, when I left there, I thought, I'm not sure what I got out of that. Because there wasn't no script. It was Jesus. Your life is bad, Jesus. Your life is good, Jesus. You need help, Jesus. You got a broken marriage, Jesus. You need help paying the bills, Jesus. You need help studying for that test, Jesus. I mean, everything was, I mean, everything. And he was screaming it and he was on fire. He was running up and down. He was sweating. And I thought, man, what in the world? And I want to tell you, I've never forgotten that message. Jesus. He knows the number of hairs you have. He knows the number of hairs you don't have that you used to have. I don't see Derek back there. There he is. I'm faking on Derek. Not, not, not this Derek. <laughs> Jesus is the answer. He is the solution. He is the life giving. He is the our all in all. He is the Son of the Most High. He intercedes on your behalf. Things in your life are about to change. Things are about to get real. You're about to face the opposition. And when the opposition comes against you, you're going to walk right through it. It's not going to stop you this time. You're going to see because of Jesus. Your eyes are going to be open. You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're going to do things that you never thought were possible again. These young men that just got what Bibles, they got their names written on the Bibles. Guess what, young men? You are about to see something amazing happen in your hearts. The things that you used to desire aren't going to be the things that you desire no more. You're going to be desiring godly things, godly truth. You're going to see the power that is at work, the light that is life-giving. You are receiving the greatest gift. May the roof of this church fly off today and the Holy Spirit come in and flood each of you. Your hearts and minds, may He take your hearts and minds to the impossible. 
to that person that won't receive the name Jesus. That person that you've given up on, that person that you haven't prayed for, that family member that is lost, that person that's in jail or that person that's in prison, that person that's in the ditch this morning waking up because it was the holidays and they thought they'd go have a good time. May the name Jesus heal them and set them free today. Just like He's ready to set us free today. He will be great, and I'm not talking about great in these walls. I'm talking about great in His world. I'm talking about great in this community. I'm talking about great through your life. May your fingerprints be the fingerprints of Jesus. May everything that you touch leave a marking of Christ. May you start proclaiming boldly from the throne, before the throne of God. May you start boldly proclaiming your life belongs to Him. Belongs to Jesus. May you realize that the past is simply the past. But the Father has renamed you. I believe the Father renames us all in the kingdom. You see, through Benjamin, he was, there was a tangible building up of the kingdom. In his lineage, there was a, the, first, the first king was, was out of his lineage. But out of the lineage of Jesus is a building up. And it's a spiritual building up. What does your spirit man or woman look like today in the kingdom? How far has he or she come? You see this building up, it doesn't, it doesn't divide, it doesn't have anything to do with male or female. It means in the sight of God that we're all equal. Amen? Women, that's good news today, isn't it? <laughs> because we get to all stand before the throne of God. And come before the throne of God as children of God. The Lord will be great and He will be called the Son of the Most High. Guess what? You're a joint heir to the King. And I believe that He wants to call you Most High. As far as a son or a daughter. He loves you today. Amen? The worship team is going to come up this morning. As they come up, I want you to think. Think about that thing, that one thing maybe that has kept you from growing. That one thing that's kept you from taking one step closer to the King of Kings. That one thing that has kept you from not experiencing the depth or the understanding. Or the un, you know, maybe it's a word that you proclaimed. Maybe it was something that someone proclaimed and said about you. I want you to think about that one thing that God is wanting to do through you today and as you begin to think about it I want you to invite God in and begin to understand that through your life other lives will be forever impacted not just in Bethlehem not just in something that we've read not just in the story the Bible story but I'm talking about Jesus coming alive for you today and setting you free Jesus is the King. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus truly ma makes it to where we can have a Merry Christmas. Amen? Merry Christmas. Please stand up as we close with this time and the altars are open. If you're here today and you haven't received Christ as your Lord, Jesus is your King, you can do that. God